talk fast. Hello everyone, Happy New Year. Hope you're doing well. We're kicking off the new year with a big one. Today I'm going to show you how I turned raw files, little clips of footage from a film into a professional trailer. That's editing, sound designing and scoring the trailer. Remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the Keytube channel and ding the bell to be notified when we release more stuff like this here on the channel. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Talk. Talk fast. Who first? Never seen one like you before. Almost human. I am human. Just enhanced. No! I can see you're very upset. I'm going to help you protect the girl. Why do you care what happens to her? Because I was her. My name is Sarah Connor. August 29, 1997 it was supposed to be Judgment Day. But I changed the future. Saved three billion lives. Enough of a resume for you. No. You may have changed the future. But you didn't change our fate. So let's get started on this, shall we? I'm just going to first take you through the um, editing uh, section. So um, this is me putting together the clip, the the trailer, um, the visuals of the trailer, that is. So um, I started off with complete raw files. They're all just like three second or between like three and ten second clips. As well as that, I did this before any sound design, so I didn't really, I had a quick look at the dialogue, but I didn't really know what was going on. So I managed to put it together quite well, I think, considering I'm not an editor at all. This is not advice from an editor, but um, I think you know, I did quite well. So I use Final Cut Pro for, for all my editing. I did use music off of YouTube to edit to. I think that's a really good thing to do because it kind of gives you an idea of the pace of the edit and it just gives you something to work to. So obviously I just showed you uh, the whole thing with music and sound design and everything, but I'm actually just gonna show you now a clip of the edit with any without any uh, music or sound design. I'm gonna show you um, the end section when it all builds up. So now if I just if I just bring out one of these clips, I'm going to show you what I had to work with basically. So just these really really super short clips. I mean this is like what like less than a second long this clip just stuff like this that um, I knew I'd be able to provide sound design for I kind of knew a basic idea of what I wanted to do I wanted to start with a sort of weird dream sequence I thought that'd be kind of cool to bring you into the trailer and then she wakes up and then I knew I would go into sort of like the the beginning titles after that introducing the film and then I knew towards the end that it would rise and rise and rise and the music would rise and then we'd be hit with the final title. When editing something like this, I think it's important to give some stuff away and give an idea of a story arc, but not like any specific details. So for example, you don't really know who any of these characters are. If you know a bit about Terminator, you might know that Arnold is quite important. As well as that, you can see that um, we have our main character here. She is the one that wakes up, um, and so she's the character that we like sort of instantly connect with. So obviously she gets the most screen time for this trailer. Again, I was just working to music, so I was just kind of like cutting it in with some drum beats, which I knew I would then rewrite. Enough of a resume for you. No. You may have changed the future. 
So that's just a basic walkthrough of how I did the edit for this. Again, really simple, just putting together a small story arc um, with lots of little clips because it's an action movie, you wanna keep the audience engaged. Let me now go on to tell you about how I did the sound design. For that, we'll be moving to Logic Pro X. So Logic is the software that I use for sound designing stuff. People use Pro Tools as well, um, but I just, I'm just way more familiar with like the editing process in Logic. Again, I'm not a sound designer, although I am much more experienced in sound design than I am editing, of course. Um, I actually wanted to be a sound designer before um, I became a composer, so um, I did study it a lot at uni and stuff. I basically just grouped the sounds into three categories. So first we have the vocal sounds, which are the like dialogue and the like grunts and stuff that the protagonist sometimes makes when they like hit people and stuff like that. The second is foley sounds, so fire crackling, helicopter sounds, boots on the ground and stuff like that. Um, so the actual sounds that are in the scene, the diegetic sounds. And then finally we have um, some extra sound design, so that swells, booms, um, impacts that sort of thing to give that lift to the energy of the trailer. I've also been working to temp music, which was the music that um, I just did a quick edit together, um, some music off of YouTube. Again, I can't use it for copyright reasons, but it gave me an idea of the kind of levels that I would be working at. You know, that's always good. I should mention as well that I got all of my sounds from this website called SoundSnap which is what I used in uni and it's what I use now. Um, you can search like, let's go for fire crackle and it'll come up with loads of different things. Little fire crackle sound there. Um, and you can just download them and then um, bring them into your door. So again, it's really, really simple. Um, let's have a look at the mixer. I've literally not used any compression or anything. Um, not even EQ really, <laughs> no I haven't EQ'd anything, um, so that's great, it just like the quality of the sound snap sounds is great. I could have EQ'd some stuff um, but really um, it wasn't really needed on this trailer, um, especially for just like a small little edit. I've mostly just sort of used I think reverb and a bit of echo. Um, so that's 97, so that's on the plane crash sound, I believe, yep. Cool, so um, I'm gonna first show you the vocal sounds. Um, so it was presented to me in one long strip of um, all the dialogue, so I had to cut it up and um, match it up to where it was used in the trailer edit. It was really well recorded dialogue and I think it had already been processed probably um, because it sounds great. Maybe a bit of reverb on there. Um, so let's see what reverb I was using. I was using vocal reflections reverb, which is really, really short reverb um, from FabFilter Pro R2. Just again, a preset, so um, not too difficult to do yourself. Now I got these grunts from SoundSnap. They seem like they fit quite well. They're not too in your face, so I liked that. It sat behind the Wait dialogue. No. So. Next, uh, this is what took the longest, but again, really, really simple. Um, just the Foley sounds. I was going in and finding lots of different sounds off sound snap, um, just to kind of uh, give some life to some of the footage that seemed a bit weird without any sound. Let's just highlight this section here. So I just wanted one little sound for each clip that comes in. Talk. Talk fast. And I was really happy with the way that that came out actually because um, I did a lot of panning and a lot of um, just like minute um, processing, um, like changing very small things um, just to make it like move around the head headphones a little bit nicer, if that makes sense. Um, you know, taking away 1 dB, 2 dB here, here and there, just like really small details and you really want to pay attention to where the subject is in the scene pan it accordingly so for example here we have two cars crashing 
I wanted two different car crash sounds. Often sound designers will layer a few sounds at once, literally like dozens of layers it could be, of different sounds to create one sound. But for this it was important because um, it just like kind of stopped it from sounding like it was just the same sound playing for each car, it kind of brings you out of the scene. So here we go, let's play this. So over here we have like a skidding sound uh, on one of them, which I liked. And then the other I believe was just the impact. See how it lines up with the car hitting the truck. You know what, it's not even perfectly timed, but it could be. This is on the right side of the screen, so I panned it a little bit right, not hard right, because it's not way over here, and it's not like kind of behind you to the right. The same with this, it's been panned left, sort of like mid left, and it helps to provide some realism when you're watching it back. Things that you don't even notice, but you would notice if it wasn't there. Again, with this machine gun sound, I've been really accurate with where it starts. See, the gunfire sort of starts there, and it finishes, I think, about here, because the screen cuts to black. But sometimes it's nice to have a sound keep going if the screen is black. It helps to provide some, like, transition into the next scene or clip. I thought this helicopter sounded quite good, added a lot of reverb to it and it kind of moves around in the headphones. See how it fades in before you even see the helicopter? I did that on purpose to create a swell into that clip. You'll notice as well for this last clip, I haven't used diegetic Foley to show you what's going on on screen. I've instead used sound design, um, but I'll come back to that in a second. So um, this bit was quite tricky actually. So as you can see, there's quite a few sounds here. Um, or I, I've got five sounds just for this one bit where she kind of like shoots the gun and then the protagonist pushes her away so the gun doesn't, the bullets don't hit anyone. You have a few things here. Firstly, the movement of the feet. As well as that, you have the clothes and like the movement of the people touching each other. So together they create this. But obviously you don't actually have the sound of the shotgun and like the grunt. So firstly, um, you tackle the gunshot. That's what I did. So I had this sound, which actually doesn't really sound like it's as in your face as it appears, but I found that with the other sounds, um, they really sounded in your face, so that gunshot just kind of helped um, to provide that sound. And as well as that, there was this punch sound. As well as that, I think, yep, I put in a little grunt. <laughs> that works pretty well. Put it all together and you get this. Hands. <laughs> And then finally, there are a few other moments of action, like these targets appearing up. I actually use a turnstile sound, like when you enter the subway in New York, you know, those turnstiles, or if you like, um, I, don't, I don't know where else they have it, maybe in a fairground or something. And then there was a rifle shot from far away. I thought a mayday alarm sound would be good for the plane hitting another plane, I think it is. Even though you wouldn't be able to hear that, it kind of just provides some cause for alarm. I think this was like a running herd of animals, which is the best I could find for him launching himself towards the camera. Another handgun, which she is using. For this, I really went in and lined up the transients of the sound wave with the uh, light um, happening on her gun. That's obviously some VFX. Now we'll have a little look at the sound design, which is of course where sound designers have the most fun. This was just used to kind of provide some energy. So for this, we've basically got a few boom sounds that I um, have downloaded that I use in music a lot, a sub bass. As well as that, there's a few rises and impacts Then again, we just have some swells and a couple more booms. 
So finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, I'm going to show you how I scored this trailer that I've edited and done the sound design for. Again, I'm going to be on Logic Pro X. It's a live composing session that I've edited down. It was about two to two and a half hours worth of writing music that I've edited down to about, I think, 20 minutes, just under 20 minutes. So I hope you enjoy, but just before that, I have a quick message for you. Hi, so I'm just going to take a really quick break from the video just to tell you about the QTU's Patreon. There's a link in the description down below and benefits start from as little as £1 a month. Please, please do consider becoming a patron. It makes these videos possible. So thank you so much to those of you who already are patrons. And as I said, benefits start from as little as £1 a month. That includes new videos for scoring and lots, lots more. So thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. So the first thing that we want to do in terms of music really is we want to change the tempo so that it fits the way that um, the clips and the cuts come in and out um, because I've cut it in a specific way where these little clips come in and out and so I've had a little play around before I'm recording this um, so you don't have to just watch me fiddle and I found that the tempo that I was set at was really fast, 198 actually um, and then that way all those sort of clips fall on um, and come in on the first beat of the bar. And then we'll probably cut here when she opens her eyes to a slow tempo again. So first things first in terms of sound is obviously we want to start it and grab the audience with that kind of massive what sound. Um, and as it starts on bar 9, we'll start from there. Um, as always, we got a bit of pre-roll. So I have a few go-tos when it comes to those kind of big bois sounds. And the ones that I use are the synth lead sounds from Albion 1, which is great because it means you'll be able to create massive, massive sounding instruments straight away as Albion 1 is like a starter kit when it comes to composing, media composing specifically. Um, and the one go-to that I have for that is this pande one called Pandemic um, <clears throat> and it just has this huge sound straight away. Cool, um, let's get those all on the first beat of the bar. Um, by quantizing them down here. Let's have this last one extend a bit longer in so you get the reverb tail into the first scene where she opens her eyes. And the reverb that I'm going to use for this is actually the concert hall reverb, which I use for a lot of my strings and my um, orchestral elements. You can usually replicate across two different sounds to create these big bois sounds, you know. Okay, so I got these low sounds, but actually the thing that I probably should have started was this kind of percussive element. It would have been cool to have like a like a ticking, like a tick, 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 tick. In logic loops, there's actually like a tick. I like that. So I'm actually going to put that into here. I have a logic loop section in my template just because I think some of them are so great and you can, like, I don't just use them just as they are. I like to mangle them a bit. I like that. I think that's great, actually. So for the drums, I'm going to use Easter Island percussion from Albion 1 as well. I think Albion 1 is it's a great library for trailer music specifically. If you want this kind of crescendo sound, like this crescendoing drum, you can go to crescendo and you can say in between bar 
9 here. So let's go to bar 9. And bar 16. Or bar 17, actually. Um, I would like... Down 1, 17. I would like a crescendo on these notes, right? So that's between bar 9 and bar 17. You can select these and then click operate only and you've got a crescendo here you can also change what velocity numbers you'd like it in between so let's say in between 30 and um, 110 let's click operate again so that puts that and then I just like to work it up a little bit more so a day has passed and uh, we've Yesterday we wrote that short section, so it's the next day, um, and I'm going to get back on with this uh, Terminator track. So what I've done in the meantime, actually, is I've kind of taken this process of reducing. So this is something that I heard Rick Rubin talking about when he talked about his work on Kanye West's album, Yeezus, and he said he kind of went in and he played the role of sort of reducer rather than producer. And I think this is something that stuck with me and always now when I write, I tend to fill out the space, do as much as I can and fill in what I can and then go back and reduce it. So I've changed it quite a bit. Before we had uh, these kind of stabs on every, um, on every cut, but now uh, I think there's only two stabs and there's just one clock tick between every stab. So it sounds like this. Talk. Talk fast. I'm I much prefer that actually. So now we're going to get into the next part of the trailer. And that's this part where there's quite a lot of um, dialogue. Who first? Never seen one like you before. Almost human. I am human. Just enhanced. I can see you're very upset. I'm going to help you protect the girl. Why do you care Maybe what happens to her? Here. Because I was her. My name is Sarah Connor. Yeah, and then so it rises to cut out probably there great I'm just gonna put a few things in to give me something to aim for and that's the rises down here there should be a noise riser somewhere down here cool and then so that's gonna come back to here happens to her because I was her my name is Sarah nice nice that's like perfect timing so great so I think this bit is kind of just going to be like some pads in the background um, because that's kind of all you need to fill in these sections with a few kind of like doppler -y sounds and stuff like that. But first, I'm just actually going to outline some of the hits that I, wanna, that I want to hit on when the different um, creators of the film appear. Never seen one like you before. Yeah, stick a boom here. And now we can go into these synth pads. Dark Intrigue, I think that sounds right. Perfect. Talk. Talk fast. Who first? Let's stick it in a black hole. I love that reverb. Who first? Never seen one like you. I'm actually going to record in some live violin. I'm currently learning violin um, and I'm very much at the beginning stages of learning, so forgive me any violinists. Talk fast. Who first? Never seen one like you before. Almost human. I am human. Okay, let's see how that went and if that was in tune and if not, if we can tune it. Who first? Never seen one like you before. Almost. We're going to give it some echo. Then I'm going to pan it left a little bit. Talk fast. Who first? Never seen one like you before. Almost human. Let's go minus 20. 
and then let's give it a fade in. Talk. Talk fast. You first. Never seen one like you before. I think some I think we should add some brass. Talk. Talk fast. You first. Never seen one like you before. Almost human. I am human. Just enhanced. Okay, so now I've moved things around a bit, mainly because I want um, a kind of uh, rise um, into where Arnold is revealed. Like you before, almost human. I am human. And this is where we pick up with some low pumping bass. So for that, I'm going to go to the synth pulse thing that I have. Uh, and I'm going to go to just hit a bass note and hold it in Albion 1. Well, that's quite high up. Don't want that. But I want it to be more like a tremolo. Boom, 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 boom. Nice. Just human. I am human. Just enhanced. I can see you're very upset. I'm going to help you. Just human. I am human. Just enhanced. I can see you're very upset. I'm. Is he upset? So basically I was trying and trying and trying and I couldn't really get anything on camera so I just said I'll go and compose the rest off camera and I'll I'll walk you through it. So um, I think when I left you I had um, a few things in this like middle section here um, but now I've kind of done the same thing where I've reduced it a little bit and it sounds a lot better actually. Um, I've tidied things up too and then I've written the final rising um, section. Let's have a look at what we've got. Talk. Talk fast. You first. Never seen one like you before. Almost human. I am human. Just enhanced. I can see you're very upset. I'm going to help you protect the girl. Why do you care what happens to her? Because I was her. My name is Zira Khan. Up to that section there. So basically, it's just kind of outlined by a lot of swells and booms and stuff like that. Along with some very basic... Uh, very very basic synth pad sounds like literally just here there's three pads and that's what do most of the the background sound kind of moves around a bit i like to pan them in different directions as you can see um this is hard right hard left and then right down the middle i've got this horn line too which is just like it just felt like some horn was needed to be honest kind of represents the intrigue that an audience has when they watch a trailer and then an anvil impact sound. Um, there's a little bit of a tremolo kind of synth pad that comes in slowly. And then there's one little like pluck, which is here. And that 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 is basically just it. I've messed around a lot with the tempo to make sure timings are like on the cut which it looks so messy but you know what it works and then we have a noise riser when you see the enemy running up to the camera when he reaches the camera it cuts out I was her. my name but then there's immediately a swell into the next section two very different swell sounds can work together to ease cuts basically cut like a cut out and a cut in. Like this is already swelling in before this is 
finished the swell. So I'm just going to play you this last section now. Yes, my name is Sarah Connor. August 29th, 1997 it was supposed to be Judgment Day, but I changed the future. Saved three billion lives. Enough of a resume for you. No. You may have changed the future, but you didn't change our fate. And that's it so this is something that like I always do the same thing for trailers like this um, just basically a rising a rising synth sound so we have this rising up D minor and then chromatically towards the end <laughs> speeds up here great and then also you just have um, a low D um, kind of bass line that's pumping to kind of keep some sort of energy Like there's some pitching issues there actually which is kind of cool which um, makes it feel a bit off kilter so this sound is actually from analog dreams which is um, what comes with contact when you buy it and then um, to kind of outline the hits I've just used a very simple Darwin percussion um, sound from Albion 1 <laughs> And as you can see, I've kind of gone in and made sure that um, all of the hits land on a strong beat. And uh, I've upped the velocity for that too. And that's kind of doubled in the... Uh, Easter Island percussion, which is also from Albion One. So if we just solo these together and play them both at the same time, and we can have a look at what's going on. like that a lot actually and not having it just hit on every strong first beat of the bar it's really good to create some variety to keep people interested basically as well as that I've got um, a little bit of strings obviously we had to add in some strings to Cartos just to outline the harmony a little bit and to raise the stakes at the last moment in the trailer so that's here and it kind of matches the rhythm of the percussive hits <laughs> And then finally, when after the main title, um, we just have a little bit of um, cellos and basses coming in. So that's it really for this um, Terminator trailer. Um, I'm really glad you guys have watched to the end thank you so much for watching do make sure to check out our patreon we've got great stuff um, coming up we'll be adding new clips um, for one pound a month um, you'll have access to everything as well as other cool stuff on the higher tiers such as extra videos of me going through composing like this remember to like the video subscribe and ding the bell to be notified when we release more stuff like this on the youtube channel thanks so much again i hope you've enjoyed bye bye now